In the gleaming heart of Southeast Asia, Singapore has long stood as a symbol of clean governance and a haven for the wealthy elite. But beneath the surface of prosperity and towering skyscrapers, an epic crime of unprecedented scale has come to light, leaving this pristine image hanging in the balance. Imagine this, $1.5 trillion. That's the staggering sum that flowed into Singapore from across borders in a single year, as estimated by the Boston Consulting Group. It catapulted Singapore to the third largest offshore financial hub globally, just behind Switzerland and Hong Kong. Affluent Asians, particularly from China, sought refuge in Singapore, seeking secure investments amidst mainland crackdowns and pandemic restrictions. It appeared to be the perfect sanctuary for their fortunes. But brace yourself, because here's where the story takes a twist. Singapore authorities launched island-wide raids, shattering the tranquility of this financial haven. Assets were seized. And shockingly, 10 foreigners found themselves in handcuffs. They faced allegations of forgery and laundering proceeds from scams and illegal online gambling. The world watched in astonishment as this real-life drama played out. The seized assets alone amounted to an astounding $2.8 billion, effectively making this one of the world's largest money laundering case. Suddenly, Singapore's impeccable reputation was on the line, and questions arose. Had the Singapore government done enough to prevent these dubious transactions? But hold on, there's more to this puzzle. How could a web of white-collar crimes of such colossal magnitude go unnoticed for so long in a place known for its stringent oversight? Were these arrests just the tip of the iceberg? Or was there a deeper, more sinister layer hidden from view? Stay tuned as we turn the spotlight on the Singapore government, as they reveal how the police dismantled this massive money laundering syndicate, and Singapore's tireless crusade against money laundering. According to a ministerial statement, it all started in 2021 when the Singapore police began receiving seemingly unrelated pieces of information. Reports of suspected forged documents being used to validate the sources of funds in Singaporean bank accounts raised eyebrows. But how did these scattered puzzle pieces connect? In early 2022, a coordinated intelligence probe was launched, unveiling a complex network of individuals, some possibly linked by familial ties. The web was widening, but that was just the beginning. Financial institutions and other companies also raised red flags with suspicious transaction alerts. The police had their hands full, as they started delving into these alerts separately. Now, here's where the suspense truly kicks in. The intelligence gathering and meticulous planning for a major operation of this scale don't happen overnight. It takes months, sometimes even years, to navigate the intricate labyrinth of anti-money laundering probes. To make matters even more challenging, the police had to maintain absolute secrecy to avoid tipping off the suspects. Only a select group of officers knew what was brewing. The decision was clear, no hasty arrests. The police bided their time, patiently piecing together the puzzle. Acting too soon might have meant missing out on the bigger picture. As the investigation unfolded, the web kept growing, ensnaring more individuals and uncovering more assets stashed in Singapore. Connecting the dots between people and assets, though, is no walk in the park. The police had to tread carefully to avoid any inadvertent leaks. After all, if the suspects got wind of the probe, they could vanish with their assets. And the entire operation would be at risk. Fast forward to early 2023, the police sought legal advice from the Attorney General's chambers. The assessment was in, and there was ample reason to suspect criminal offences had occurred right here in Singapore. And then, on the 15th of August 2023, the moment of truth arrived. The police moved swiftly, orchestrating raids at good-class bungalows, condominiums, and landed properties. Over 400 police officers from various divisions were in on the operation. The 10 suspects, residing in areas like Sentosa Cove, Tanglin, Orchard, Holland, and River Valley, were apprehended. But what did these individuals have to hide? The assets seized during these raids read like a tale from a high-stakes heist movie. Brace yourselves for this, 152 properties and 62 high-end vehicles valued at over $1.24 billion. Bank accounts overflowing with more than $1.45 billion and stacks of cash in various currencies amounting to over $76 million. But that's not all. The list goes on, with thousands of bottles of premium liquor and wine a treasure trove of cryptocurrency worth over $38 million, 68 gleaming gold bars, 294 designer bags, 
164 luxury watches, and an astonishing 546 pieces of dazzling jewelry. It was as if the suspects had been amassing a fortune beyond imagination. It might sound like flashy Hollywood excess, but yachts, jewelry, wine, and watches are all valued by the savviest investors around. This raid shows that it's easier to move your millions around with physical assets, should you need to make a quick getaway. But they all share another important trait. It's their value's low correlation to the stock market. Luxuries like these gain value exponentially over time, uninterrupted, no matter the state of the world economy. And while you and your family are at the mercy of these unpredictable economies, the world's elite have insulated their fortunes for centuries to come. Luckily, you no longer need billions of dollars to invest like a billionaire. Our newest sponsor, Masterworks, has given thousands of everyday investors access to the most prestigious asset of them all, museum-grade fine art. Over 300 offerings from the world's most famous artists like Picasso, Basquiat, and even Banksy. Billionaires wanted it, but 54,578 everyday investors got it first. Masterworks team of Ivy League data geniuses and art experts have crunched decades of art auction data, and they've successfully used that data to pay out over $45 million in returns to their investors who weren't billionaires with art market connections. 16 straight exits, with all 16 delivering positive returns to their investors. Their offerings have sold out within hours. But you can now skip the waitlist and get started today at the link in the description. Undoubtedly, the arrested suspects have gone to great lengths to store their wealth in the various assets now confiscated by the Singapore authorities. But who exactly are they? Here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. The individuals arrested come from far-flung corners of the world, such as countries like Cyprus, Turkey, and Cambodia. But here's the kicker. Many of them are not just acquaintances. They're connected by blood and marriage ties. And here's the icing on the cake. They all hail from Fujian, a province in eastern China. Sources also reportedly told the media that the group was dubbed the Fujian Gang in Singapore. The police also revealed that the group was suspected of laundering money from organized crime activities abroad. And we're not talking small-time stuff, we're talking scams and online gambling, on an international scale. To add to the complexity of the case, at least two of them are wanted by China's law enforcement. Curiously, the foreigners weren't just in Singapore for leisure. They had their paperwork in order. They held employment and dependence passes, giving them a legitimate presence in the city. It turns out these individuals had earned quite a reputation for themselves. They were notorious for their lavish lifestyles and have been in Singapore for nearly seven years. It begs the question, how did they manage to maintain such an extravagant lifestyle while staying within the bounds of the law? But wait, there's more. Investigations are still ongoing, and it's not just these foreign nationals under scrutiny. The net has widened to include Singaporeans, permanent residents, and individuals with various immigration passes. Even the wives of the 10 suspects are in the spotlight. And if that's not enough to pique your interest, there's a group of eight others who managed to slip through the cracks during the police raids. One of them, believe it or not, is the mastermind behind an illegal online gambling empire. The question is, will they be caught? As the investigation continues, it's worth noting that some of the accused may have had ties to single-family offices, awarded tax incentives by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. These offices manage assets on behalf of one family and are subject to rigorous anti-money laundering checks. Yet, at the time of application, no red flags were raised regarding the suspects and their associated entities. Which leads to the question of how effective these anti-money laundering checks really were. The story doesn't end here. The 10 suspects are now facing charges of money laundering, and they've been denied bail. Some are even charged with forgery, while two are additionally facing charges of resisting arrest and perverting the course of justice. Nonetheless, the question looms large, has Singapore done enough to combat money laundering? It's a question that's not easily answered. Given the high volume of financial transactions that pass through this global hub on a daily basis, Singapore stands as one of the world's leading international financial centers. The sheer volume of transactions that occur here daily is staggering, to say the least. But it's precisely this volume that provides a perfect smokescreen for illicit activities. Imagine trying to spot a single suspicious transaction amidst millions. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. Singapore, well aware of its status as an attractive financial hub, understands the gravity of the situation. 
the government has put in place an anti-money laundering regime that involves a collaborative effort across various ministries, agencies, financial institutions, and international partners. They recognize that when a city-state is open for business, it becomes a magnet not only for legitimate enterprises, but also for criminals seeking to launder their ill-gotten gains. However, let's not forget that Singapore isn't the only target on the money launderer's radar. All major financial hubs, regardless of their stringent measures, are vulnerable. The very characteristics that make them financial giants also make them tempting targets for those looking to legitimize their dirty money. The reality is stark. Despite Singapore's best efforts, some illicit funds will inevitably find their way into the city's coffers. But Singapore is resolute in its stance. When such activities come to light, decisive action is taken. So, what's Singapore's strategy to combat money laundering? It's a three-pronged approach. First, prevention. Gatekeepers in various sectors, including financial institutions, real estate agents, lawyers, accountants, and dealers of precious stones and metals, play a pivotal role. They are legally required to conduct due diligence, diligently watching for any red flags that hint at suspicious transactions. For instance, dealers of precious stones and metals are obliged to file cash transaction reports for sums exceeding $20,000. In this particular money laundering case, the Ministry of Law sent out notices containing a list of individuals potentially linked to suspicious transactions to these dealers. The suspects had also been busy purchasing high-value assets like luxury cars, designer bags, fine liquor, and ornaments. Interestingly, these items are not currently regulated, raising questions about whether anti-money laundering requirements should be expanded to encompass new asset classes. The second prong is detection primarily reliant on the Suspicious Transaction Reporting Office and the reports filed. This office collaborates with various sectors and regulators to compile a list of red flag indicators, constantly updated to tackle emerging risks. The intelligence gathered is thoroughly analyzed and shared with relevant government agencies. But the catch is that money launderers are constantly evolving, trying to outsmart the authorities at every turn. The third prong of Singapore's anti-money laundering strategy is enforcement. Singapore's robust regime in this aspect is highly regarded worldwide. Take the case of former Formula One boss Bernie Eccleston, for instance. Singapore lent its support to British law enforcement agencies in the investigation. The Monetary Authority of Singapore, along with the police and attorney general's chambers, cooperated closely with the British counterparts, actively sharing information. Another instance was the Wirecard fraud scandal in Germany, where Singapore took action. Three banks and an insurer faced penalties totaling 3.8 million Singapore dollars for their failure to conduct proper customer due diligence and establish the sources of wealth of high-risk customers. Seven individuals were charged, with three convicted of offenses including money laundering. Yet, despite these stringent preventive measures and Singapore's reputation as a financial watchdog, the billion-dollar money laundering case serves as a stark reminder that even the tightest nets can be breached by determined criminals. However, it also showcases Singapore's capability to detect suspicious individuals and activities. And when the need arises, the nation has the resolve and means to track them down and hold them accountable. But here's the real conundrum. How did these 10 suspects manage to secure immigration passes? Singapore's meticulous scrutiny of pass applications is known, but there's a pressing need to delve deeper. How can the country bolster its checks, especially for high-risk individuals? including those with criminal records or those wanted in foreign jurisdictions. While Singapore collaborates with foreign governments to validate suspicious information provided by pass applicants, here's the catch. The sheer volume of applications makes it impossible to conduct verification checks for every single application. It's a daunting challenge, to say the least. It's worth noting that at the time the 10 arrested suspects applied for their passes. None of them were on Interpol's red notices, which are like global alerts for wanted criminals and fugitives. It's a testament to how these individuals managed to stay off the radar until their recent arrests. The dilemma lies in finding the right balance. Singapore understands the importance of stringent screening processes. But it also recognizes that most applicants are law-abiding citizens. If the rules become too rigid, it's the innocent majority who will bear the brunt. The real culprits, the crafty money launderers, will continue to seek loopholes. Hence, Singapore's task is clear, minimize risks and enhance the ability to apprehend wrongdoers, without burdening the vast majority of honest applicants. It's a fine line to tread, 
but Singapore remains steadfast in its commitment to protect its financial integrity while fostering a welcoming environment for legitimate transactions. So, has Singapore done enough to prevent money laundering? The answer remains to be seen as the battle against financial crime rages on in this bustling financial epicenter. As the police continue with their investigations into this shocking money laundering case, we're left with a burning question. Are there more layers to this tale waiting to be uncovered? But that's not all. There's another mystery lurking in the shadows. Who is the elusive criminal mastermind behind the illegal online gambling empire that had cleverly evaded capture? Watch this video to find out more.